Back again with another one. In this video, I'll be breaking down how much you need to make in order to afford a 2022 Audi RS3. I also wanted to say thank you to all of you who I saw that 2023 Nissan Z video and the support there. I appreciate all the comments and everything like that. If you haven't seen that, I will bring the link in the top right of the corner right now. But first, I've included some links to products in the description that'll help you maintain your vehicle's appearance and will ultimately make you more money down the road when you decide to sell it. These are just Meguiar's products that I personally use. I really like Meguiar's, um, but you guys can let me know your opinion too. There are four options that I'll be going over today, and you can decide on which one suits you the best, depending how into cars you are. I've seen some comments on the bottom of the video. Some people are willing to spend a lot more on cars, uh, which is why I've also included my own personal link down there. Stick around to the end of the video to find out which method would be best for you and your personal situation. Like I said, some people want a reliable form of transportation and some want a pretty sweet car like this RS3 and are willing to pay a little bit more for it and sacrifice a little bit more. Before I dive into that first rule, uh, these videos take quite a lot of time and effort to make. So if you could please give it a like and subscribe, comment down below what other vehicles you would like to see or your thoughts or your own personal plan, I would I'll read all of them. Starting with the Dave Ramsey rule, you must have a three to six month emergency fund built up. The vehicle can't be more than 50% of your annual gross income and you must purchase it in cash. Given that the 2022 Audi RS3 starts at $58,900 if you're lucky enough to get it around MSRP and the base, your annual gross income would need to be a minimum of $117,800. Ideally, it's nice to purchase a vehicle in cash as you don't have to pay interest, your insurance would be a bit lower, and it's just the peace of mind of not having a car payment is pretty nice. But obviously, there's not too many people that just have like 60 grand in cash that they can just throw at a car. The next rule is going to be the 2410 rule, which is a little bit easier than the Dave Ramsey rule, but still tricky for the majority of people, I would say. Uh, this states that you must put down at least 20% on the vehicle. You're not allowed to finance it for more than four years or 48 months and the payment can't be more than 10% of your monthly gross income. Given that the 2022 Audi RS3 has an MSRP of $58,900, you would need to put down $11,780. And with the average new vehicle interest rate of 3.86% in a 48 month term, this would bring your monthly payment to a little over a thousand bucks at $1,060.98. Bank rate states that the average monthly insurance cost is about $148, but to be more accurate, use the Smart Financial link in the description down below to find out how much it would cost you to insure a 2022 Audi RS3. Chances are it might be a little bit more than that because this is definitely more of a performance car and luxury brand, so typically that will carry a higher insurance premium. This would bring your monthly total to $1,208.98, not including gas, and then going back to that 2410 roll, given that your monthly cost would be 1208 bucks, you would need a monthly gross income of $12,089.80, which would add up to about $145,077.60 annually. Those first two rules are pretty tricky to achieve, and you would assume that the majority of people would not follow them or be able to achieve them, which is why I've come up with my own. For my rule, you need to have at least a six-month emergency fund, invest 15% of your gross income into your 401k, and then max out your Roth IRA and ideally your HSA. I know it might seem like a lot of saving and investing, but I don't give you that monthly percentage rule that you have to stick to. So it's up to you to decide if you want to spend more of your monthly income on a vehicle or if you'd rather go out to dinner on weekends more or to the bar or spend more on vacations or trips, that sort of thing. And then the six month emergency fund is just there in case anything crazy thing happens like an emergency. If you have an injury or, you know, I mean, use your imagination. There's a lot of crazy things that can happen. And then the investment portion will just give you a little bit of financial security later in life when you're going to need it the most. And there's a lot of people that say that, well, you know, nothing's really guaranteed. And that's definitely true. Uh, but it's also very difficult to put a value on having peace of mind for yourself or your family's future. And so I think it's smart to follow one of these rules or a modified version of this to make sure you have that security before going ahead and pulling the trigger on something like this. The final rule is the one-tenth rule, which was developed by Financial Samurai and personally one that I think a lot of people who are really trying to build their wealth should consider. Uh, it's 
pretty stringent. It really doesn't allow you to buy a new vehicle, but it does allow you to spend responsibly and it reduces your financial car ownership stress, which will allow you to increase your net worth over time. It's a pretty straightforward rule. It states that you shouldn't spend more than 10% of your gross annual income on a vehicle. It can be new or it can be old, but it's probably going to be old and used because there's not too many people. I mean, in this case, you would need to be making $580,000 a year to be able to buy this RS3. And you must own it for at least five years. And the theory behind this is to minimize your financial stress and free up a little bit of money to invest in assets or opportunities, things that go up in value that might come your way. It's much more stressful and difficult making life decisions and important decisions when you're worried about payments each month. One of the biggest killers of building wealth are cars and car payments, especially for young folks. Um, There's a lot of people that are getting upside down on a car payment, can't really get out from under it, and then ending up losing quite a bit of money. It's generally the most amount of money that somebody will spend on an item that goes down in value. So if you think of investing as like compounding an interest and going up, When you buy a car that you really can't afford, it kind of does the opposite. It depreciates and it doesn't allow you to put your money in other areas where it could grow. I suggest using a compound interest calculator to see how much your investments may turn into into the future. It definitely takes a little bit of patience and discipline, um, but obviously everybody that did it in the past is thanking themselves now. Again, hit the smart financial link in the description below to dial in exactly what your insurance costs would be and the true bill link to find out how much you're currently spending in order to gauge what you would be able to afford to help get a hold of your finances. That smart financial link, the people there, they actually uh, do a little researching around for you and find the best rate for you personally. And then give a look at those uh, cleaning supplies, those McGuire ones, if you want. I left that description down there. Um, If you maintain your vehicle properly, you're obviously going to get more for it down the line when you sell, and this can add up to thousands of dollars, especially when it's a sought-after vehicle in incredible condition. Again, I appreciate every one of you who stuck around to the end of the video. Give it a like, subscribe, and leave future video comments and suggestions or thoughts down below. Thank you.